we serve an awesome God tonight. Hallelujah.
such a faithful God. You are so faithful, Heavenly Father. And God, we trust in you. God, we need you. We need your glory, Father God. Lord, let your Holy Spirit rise up within your army, God, within your children, Lord Jesus. Let that fire of your Holy Spirit rise up within us, Lord God. Lord, that your glory is not just in this physical building, but it is housed in our bodies, Lord God. Lord, that wherever we may go, that the fire would spread, Lord God, like wildfire through the forest, through a dry. God, we are living in a dry and a dead forest, Lord God. They are dry, Lord Jesus. Lord, let your glory go before us. Let your glory flow through us, Lord Jesus. Lord, that it would just overtake. Lord, let your glory overtake everywhere that we go, Lord God. Let your glory overtake, Lord Jesus. Overtake our conversations. Overtake our desires. Overtake the meaning of our life, Lord God. Let your glory be known, Lord Jesus, in my life. Lord, let your glory be real in my life, Lord God. There's a lot.
lost in a hurting world that needs your glory, God. Giving praise tonight. Come on. Isn't God awesome? How many blessed tonight? How many God's done something for him lately? How many know that he's still on the move? How many would say there's a situation in life, something you're going through, circumstances, and, and you need breakthrough. Yeah. Come on. How many would like to have breakthrough tonight in something or breakthrough this week in something? Well, I'm going to give you three points to breakthrough tonight, and I believe that if you grab them and you use them, you can have it. Psalms 150, I'm going to read one through six. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Come on. This belongs to him. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise him for his unequal greatness. I'm going to read that one again because I really like that one. Praise him for his unequal Greatness. Nobody measures up to my God. Nobody can do what he can do. You know, people run all over the place chasing a move. I just need to praise him tonight. Amen? Praise him with a blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with the harp. Praise him with the tambourine. Praise him in dance. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with a clash of the cymbals. Praise him 
with a loud clanging cymbal. Let everything that has breath sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bible in many places encourages us to praise. It exhorts us to praise. It even commands us to praise the Lord. And you say, well, that's what we just did. We just praised him. Yeah, kind of. Praise, worship. Both words uh, come from the Greek word meaning glory, but there are some differences between praise and worship. Worship, by context, is something at times that can be done with silence. But praise, you've got to have a voice. Remember what our text, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. You know, maybe the difference can be described like this. Praise is about God. Worship is to God. Praise is, is just opening up. Worship is entering in. Praise is boldly declaring. Worship is humbly bowing at his presence. You know, and God tells us to praise him. I can remember, and I've probably shared this, but uh, as mom was in the hospital there battling COVID, daily we, we just lifted her up and we were praying and, you know, asking God to do this, listen to the doctors and, and praying this. And one morning, God said, I got it. Just give me praise. I guess you thought I was pretty hard hearing or just stubborn or hard headed. And he got all of those right. If you ask Bethany, I'm hard hearing. If you ask my mother, I'm stubborn. And I'm definitely hard headed. But later that day, he had a lady from the church call me and Bethany. She was out in the garden and couldn't get it out of her mind and had to call us right away. And she said, you know, God just wants you to give him praise. He's heard your cries. He's heard your praise, your prayers. And now he wants you to just praise him for what he's already done and praise him for what he's getting ready to do because our God is good. Now think about that. Can we get to that place where no matter what's going on, I know my God is good and worthy of praise. Think about it. If God never did another thing, if Jesus never did another thing for us, but came back and got us, is he worthy of our praise? Come on. He gave everything. He died a horrible death on a cross took a beating so that my debt that I could not pay was written off. And in that, a place that I would never be able to afford in heaven was paid for. He's worthy of our praise. But those of us that know him today, know that he, he didn't stop there. And he's not going to stop today. And he's not going to stop tomorrow. And he's going to keep going. And he's going to keep answering prayers. And he's going to keep moving. He's going to keep blessing his people. He's going to touch and heal. Because he's a compassionate God. He's a loving Father. And so sometimes we just need to stop and praise him. And I think at this point we need to separate the two. You see, I might have a worship song I love. But if I'm not careful, I just get lost in the song. Come on. Y'all probably better than me, but I can do that. Okay? But when I begin to praise, I begin to think about how good he is. It reminds me of what he's already done. And it builds my faith up. Come on. I'm thinking, man, 
Think of the healings. Think of the deliverances. Think about when I was in hard times and he just intervened. Think about when I, I needed an answer. Come on. And it just happened. Think about when I, I needed some dollars. And it just came. Think about it. And give him praise. And then go one step farther and say, you know what? God, I know the situation I'm in right now. I know that you're aware of it because about every hour, I make you aware of it. But I'm going to stop. And I'm just going to thank you for taking care of it. I'm going to trust it to you and I'm going to give you praise because I know you know better than I what I really have need of and I give you praise for it. And whatever you decide, come on, it's going to be good enough so I give you praise. Let me give you three things praise does. Number one, praise brings God's presence. How many of you have ever been in a good church service? Come on. Y'all should have raised your hand. I'm pastor. How many have ever been in the presence of God in a church service? You know there's a difference? Come on. You can be in a good church service. And there would not be the presence of God. Come on. Because everything was done right and everything was done good. And it was good. Say, Pastor, you need to be smart. No, I'm, I'm being honest today. And you know what? Some people chasing good church services today. Instead of the presence of God. Second Chronicles 5 and 13 says the trumpeters and the singers performed together in unison to praise and give thanks to the Lord. Accompanied by the trumpets, the cymbals, and the other instruments, they praised, their, they raised their voices and praised the Lord with their words. He is good. He is faithful. His love endures forever. At that moment, a thick cloud filled the temple of the Lord. I love this part. Pastor could not continue with their services because of the cloud. Come on. For the glorious presence of the Lord had filled the temple of God. Come on. It's not about being good. We like it when they're good. And if their heart's right, God's going to make them good. But if all they got is talent, there's never going to be a cloud fill the temple because of them. Now all the praise and worship leaders around shut us off now. And we're good to go on. Come on. Says they raised their voices. They praised the Lord with their words, saying, He is good. What's that song? Good Father? Is that, huh? That's it? I'm good? Come on. I love that song just reminds me, every time I hear it, it reminds me how good he is. And I start thinking about the things in my life that he's done. Come on, the times that I cried out and he intervened, the times when it looked like there was no hope, that he brought hope. He's faithful. You might not understand this, but if you 
and go back and really figure it out. And God has always been faithful to you. He's never let you down. Oh, he might have let you go through a bump. You might have had a rough day or two, but he's never just forsaken you and left you. Now, maybe you've done that to him, but he's been faithful. His love endures forever. You know, everybody's got a different concept, but I think before I was, God already had me figured out. I think he pretty well knew what I was going to do and what I wasn't going to do. I figured before I made my mistakes, before I made my messes, that he was aware that I was headed there. But you know what? He loved me anyway. He loved me before them. He loved me during them. He loved me after them because his love is forever. This time, a virus. He's faithful to love us through it. But sometimes when we just forget about all else and come to the service and say, you know what? I'm not going to want anything for an hour. I'm not going to ask for anything for an hour. I'm not going to expect anything for me. I'm just going to give him praise for what he's already done. You know, if most of us wrote down and began to remember the things that he'd done and we begin to write it down, we couldn't in one hour praise him and accomplish everything that he's done for us. Come on. In fact, truth is, we wouldn't be able to write everything down. And probably until we get to heaven, we're not going to know everything that he's done. The things that he's protected us from because Somebody in the middle of the night woke up and said, you know what? I'm going to pray for Pastor. I'm going to pray for Richard. And God said, I hear that, and I love him, and I'm going to protect him from that situation. I'm going to move it out of the way. I give him praise for what he's done that I know that he's done, but I also praise him for what I don't know. And while I'm at it, I'm praising him tonight for what he's going to do. You see, through this whole situation, I believe that God's going to be given glory. He's going to show himself. He's going to expose the enemy. And so I just praise him during this time. God, I praise you that you are the cure. You are the healer. You are the provider. But I thank God tonight that I can come to his house and I can come expecting him to fill the temple. You see, what happens then? When the presence of God fills the temple, things just begin to happen. Come on. The lady in the back gets healed, gets delivered, gets set free. Come on. His love becomes so real that we just begin to weep. Nobody knows what to do. Says, the priest couldn't do nothing. I remember 
watching a service not too long ago. It was John Kilpatrick's service. And it was years back. And they were just offering praise to God. Church was just offering praise. And I don't even remember the song being sung. I don't know that there was even a song being sung. But they were just offering praise. And I looked over. The camera moved over. Pastor Kilpatrick was just sitting there with his Bible and his notes ready to bring the word. But the glory of God filled that house. You could just sense it. I mean, I'm watching it years later, and I feel the presence. And they get ready for him. And he's sitting in the chair with his Bible on his leg and cannot move. He doesn't get up and come. Why? Because the presence of God filled the temple. I can remember laughing and enjoying a service. I think it was Hagee. And the presence of God filled the temple. And the worship leader just lost it in dance couldn't control himself. And so somebody came to try to take the mic and move the service on because we've got things we got to do. Come on. And when he got the mic, dance came upon him. Person after person. One guy ended up in the baptismal. You say, that's just silliness. No. No. The presence of God filled the temple and the needs of the people were met and all they could do was give praise because he is good. You see, as I understand it, One of the hardest things for those that have this COVID virus is they're isolated. They need to be alone. If they're in the hospital, their family is not allowed to be with them. And that makes it very difficult in the healing process because we are a people that need to be loved. And what this world needs today, what our city needs, what our church needs, is us to praise God in such a manner that he feels that he can fill the temple. Because when his presence is here, they're going to feel loved. The thing about God is when he loves you, come on, look at the life of Jesus. Why are we going here? Master, because she's hurting. She's all alone. Nobody will have anything to do with her. Well, that's her fault. She made her own mess. But he loved her and had to be with her. He's blind. But I love him. It's got to go. You see, if we just get in a mode, we are coming to praise God for how good he is. He will fill this place. It won't be on my shoulders. It won't be on Trina and the prayer, prayer team's shoulders. It won't be on the worship team's shoulders. It won't be on your shoulders. It'll be on God's shoulders, and he'll say, you know what, that's a place I can go. And I'm going to get praise and I'm going to be glorified in that place. No matter what happens, they won't take credit for it. They're going to give me praise. But we got to learn that no matter where 
and what's going on, and that he is worthy. He's worthy. I've had a bad week. So, he's still a good God, still loves you. Give him praise. Praise secures victory. Second Chronicles 2015, 16 through 22. He said, listen, all you people of Judea and Jerusalem. Listen, King Jehoshaphat. This is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by the mighty armies. For the battle is not yours. It's God's. <laughs> you got to love it. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Come on. I know you're facing a lot, people. I'm with you. I see. I've heard your cries. Don't be afraid. I'm with you. In fact, this battle's not yours. It's mine. Tomorrow, march out against them. You will find them coming up through the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness, but you will not even need to fight. That's the best fight you can go to. You promise victory, and you don't even have to fight? Come on, man. Take your positions. Then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you, O people. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. Then King Jehoshaphat bowed. Lo, with his face to the ground, all the people of Judea and Jerusalem did the same, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites stood to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud shout. Early the next morning, the army of Judea went out into the wilderness. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, Listen to me, all you people. Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets. And you will succeed. After consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army. Come on. He put the praisers up front to sing praises to the Lord for his holy and splendor. This is what they sing. Give thanks to the Lord. He's faithful and his love endures forever. I'm not, you know. Come on. God's so good. Yeah, you're in the biggest fight of your life. I understand that, people. But here's the deal. This is where the enemy is going to come and attack. I want you to go there. I want you to stand there and stand firm. I want you to sing praise and give thanks because the victory is already yours and I'm going to give it to you. At the very moment they begin to sing and give praise, the Lord caused the armies to start fighting among themselves. You want to see the devil kill himself? You want to see him fight himself and, and lose? Start singing praise. He can't get out of the house quick enough when we begin to praise God because he knows that something good is about to happen. He knows that God inhabits our praise. He knows that he don't want to be in the same area. So when we quit whining, when we quit asking, when we quit complaining, we start winning. And we don't even have to fight. I mean, praise ought to be easy for us because our God is good. Praise became a song of supernatural. You need victory? Focusing on the problem is not going to solve 
the problem. Staring at a mountain that's got to be moved isn't going to solve the problem. But praise will. Psalms 149. Let the praise of God be in their mouths and a sharp word, word sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the people, to bind their kings with shackles and their leaders with iron chains, to ex execute the judgment written against them. This is a glorious privilege of the faithful ones. Praise the Lord. When the devil attacks, resist him. He'll flee. Best way to resist him is to sing praises to God. You know, have you ever wanted just to make somebody mad? Just, you know, I think I'll just call Brother Carl today and make him mad. Well, if you call him and all you do is praise Judy and how good she is, and you don't say nothing about him, he's going to get aggravated. Probably not Carl, but most people would. Come on. If all the devil ever hears from you, if the only words that he hears is how good God is, he's not going to be a found around you. Come on. You want him to leave? Just start talking about the Father. And you can't talk about God and it not be good unless your God's different than my God. Praise brings victory, secures it. Praise breaks the chains of bondage and sets you free. Isaiah 61 and 3, to all who mourn in Israel, we give a crown of, of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be great oaks, that the Lord has planted for his glory. Acts 16, 25 and 26, around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. The other prisoners had to listen. Suddenly there was a massive earthquake. The prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. Church, it's important that this is a place, a sanctuary, where the presence of God is welcome because if we're doing our part, the drug addict, an alcoholic, those addicted to pornography. Those that hate others. Those lost in sin should enter this place. And when the praise goes up to God, the foundation of their sin is going to be shaken. And the chains are going to be broken and they will be set free. You see, what he did once, he'll do again. And the reason he recorded it was so that we knew it and so that he did it, so that we pursued it. I mean, Paul and Silas, in that midnight hour, the darkest hour of their situation, thought, man, morning comes, we're probably going to be killed. 
it's happened to others, it's going to happen to us. But you know what? Our God is good. I mean, they just got to thinking about it and they couldn't help themselves and said, I'm just going to offer up some praise. I'm going to offer up some shout. I'm going to offer up some song because no matter what tomorrow brings, my God has been good to me to this point. And they begin to praise in the prison. And soon everybody heard it. And soon everybody was set free. Come on. I can write down a long list of prayer needs for this church that people are facing that I'm aware of. I can spend all day tomorrow here at the altar praying for them, and that'd be good. But before I do, I should offer up praise. Come on. And when I'm praising him for what he's already done, I should praise him for what he's going to do. Because you know what? He's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's going to heal you. He's going to change your situation at home. He not broke. He knows your financial situation. Give him praise, and he will change it. You're addicted tonight? Give him praise. He wants to break those chains. He's a good God. He's never failed. He's promised us victory. He said our praise will secure it. It'll bring his presence. You know, when the devil's beating you up, you're home, you're all alone. Begin to praise God and watch him enter your home. Set you free. So tonight I'm going to ask Bethany to come. You know, for a lot of our students, tomorrow's a big day. Many of them go back to school. I think I'm right. Tomorrow and Wednesday. This week. I was reminded, as I thought about it, that of the round table with the students. And you know, we think kids don't think about nothing, don't care. They, they did. And they got concerns. I mean... If I'm going to be walking down the hallway with 2,000 people in this situation, it's very concerning. And so I think we should just offer up praise tonight. Praise my team. Because God, presence needs to go with our kids this week. Amen? We've got a couple three families that right now are battling this virus, members of their family or, or them themselves. And we just need to offer up some praise. Come on, God's got it. He's going to take care of it. It's going to be okay. We've got people tonight that are in financial bondage because of situations they haven't been able to work. Let's offer up praise tonight and let God take care of it. We have people in this congregation hurting because they've lost loved ones this week, last week. Let's offer a praise and God to comfort them that he'll break chains. And so we're just going to take a few moments before we leave tonight and give God praise. Now, to me, 
I can worship and be quiet. I can just lay before God. But when I praise, I'm talking about how good he is. I need to lift my voice and give him praise tonight. Amen? Will you join us? I'm going to step down. Bethany, what I'm going to do is I just want you to lead us in praise. Songs that will give praise. He's good. Then I want you to close us. Pray for our students. Pray for the needs. Give God praise for answering them. We're going to just praise him ahead of time. I know he's going to do it. I know Mandy's healed Amen. tonight. In Jesus' name. And I give him praise for it because he praise. is good. Dennis said, I want to put you on the spot, but praise songs without a drummer is kind of hard. Come on, give him praise.
done for me. I think about his goodness and how he set me free. I want to dance, 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 dance all day. Faster than COVID, yes. Faster than COVID in the name of Jesus. The glory of the Almighty God is going to spread faster than anything the enemy may try to block us with. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We plead your blood, Heavenly Father. We thank you, God, for healing in this house. We thank you for Dennis, Lord God. You are showing yourself faithful to this man. We give you glory, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 To God be all the glory. To God be all the glory. Amen. Amen. Y'all can't walk out tonight. You got to move it. You got you to gotta dance out because you're still praising on the way out the door, right? Amen. <laughs> hey, Dennis, can you give me some drums? I'm praising.